Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm really excited to talk to you about the topic of beauty and intersectionality. My name is Aaron Golub. I became the first legally blind Division I athlete to play in a game when I played football at Tulane University. I went on to become a team captain and then an NFL free agent. Now I'm an entrepreneur and a speaker, and I'm really thrilled to be here and dive into this topic and talk to you about my thoughts and opinions. When you think of beauty and intersectionality, you probably think about finding the beauty in certain situations in certain areas of life, and I do as well. What I wanna to talk to you guys about today though and specifically point out is finding the beauty in your disadvantages. Finding the beauty in any obstacle, any challenge, any issue that's going on in your life. How can you make that your advantage? How can you make that your asset, your resource? That's what I was able to do with my vision. I'm so thankful and so blessed today that I was born legally blind because it's allowed me to do incredible things, meet amazing people, and have outstanding experiences. And if I wasn't legally blind, none of that would have happened. I was able to find that beauty in what most people would see as a disadvantage and turn it into my greatest advantage, my greatest asset, and my greatest resource because of how I think of it. Because of how I want to have myself perceive being legally blind. I remember when I got my first job after school. I graduated in May of 2018 from Tulane University. And I started working at a company and it was very challenging. It was a very visual role and wasn't the best fit for me. And about six months in December, my manager and I sat down together and he said, Aaron, I know you're struggling. Let's find a way, let's talk through how we can, you know, what we can do to help with this. And realistically, I knew that he was essentially saying, look, Aaron, you're struggling, which I know I was. We need to have more accountability on you in case I have to fire you in a few months and I need to cover my ass. And that brought back all these feelings from when I was a kid of why me? When I was a kid, I was never the most athletic person. I was never the most confident person. I was often picked last for sports and it was hard. I tried several sports growing up, whether it be baseball or basketball or soccer or hockey, and none of them really worked. It was difficult. And it wasn't until I found football that I really was playing a sport that I could actually play and be a part of a team. When I started in seventh grade, I began as an offense and defensive lineman. I knew I couldn't be you know, a quarterback or a wide receiver, the positions that everyone wants to be. I could never catch a ball 40 yards down the field because of my vision. And, you know, just to give a little picture for those of you that don't know what being legally blind is, for me, I have no vision in my right eye and extremely limited in my left. And in my left eye, I have a hole probably the size of half of a dime. And out of that hole, my vision is 2200. So if you have perfect vision, if you have 2020 vision, what you would see at about 200 feet away, I would see at about 20 feet away. And that's what my vision looks like through that small hole. And so I was an offensive defensive lineman in seventh grade, and it was fine. You know, I was undersized, legally blind, but at that time it was about learning the game, being a part of the team, and it wasn't necessarily about the competitiveness of football and, you know, accomplishing great things at that age. It was about learning, and that was okay. But once I became a sophomore in high school, I was a third-string junior varsity offensive and defensive lineman, and I, I said I had enough of this. I was sick of it. I wanted to play on varsity. I wanted to play in college. I wanted to play division one football. And if you are a sophomore in high school, no matter the sport, whether it be football, baseball, swimming, soccer, tennis, basketball, any sport, and you're going to play division one, you are probably either starting on varsity or getting a lot of playing time on varsity. That just is how it is. And that wasn't the case for me. And so I had to do two things. And first off, I had to say, if I want to play in college, I need to figure out the best position for you to do so. And I found long snapping. And for those of you that don't know what long snapping is, I'm the person on punts and field goals who crouch down and pick up the football, throw it between my legs to the punter or holder for the punt or the extra point or field goal. And then I'd have to block the person in front of me. And I realized that if I got good enough at long snapping, I might have an opportunity to play in college. I might. The next step was because of my disadvantage, because of my disability, I realized that I had to work 10 times harder than everyone else just to be as good as them. 
And so from then on out, I would wake up at 5 a.m. every day. I'd go practice long snapping. I'd go to school. I'd go to practice. I'd lift weights. And that was my day for the next several years because I knew what I had to do to achieve success. And I knew that if I found the beauty in this situation, if I found the beauty in my disadvantage and this hard work, that I could do whatever it takes to achieve my goal and that I could turn my disadvantage of being legally blind into my greatest advantage. So many people don't see it that way. So many people accept their disadvantage and focus on it as a negative. And what I want to tell you is what you focus on is what attracts to you. When you think of things, if you think of your disadvantages, if you think of the negative things in your life, why you haven't accomplished things, those are what's going to attract to you. If you think of creating success, positivity, accomplishing great things, that's what's going to attract to you. I promise you. Because that's how life works. And I want to prove it to you right now with a little exercise. So first off, wherever you're watching this, look around the room. Try and find something green. Take a minute. Just look look for something green. It might be a green pen or a notebook. It might be an apple or a piece of fruit. Just, just take a look. Okay. Now I want you all to shut your eyes. Take a second and close your eyes and relax. Think of the color green. Green grass. A green plant, a green fruit, a green car driving down the highway, green leaves on trees, a green notebook. Just think of green. Now open your eyes. Immediately look for something green in your room again. It was much easier, right? Because what you focus on, what you think of, is what attracts to you. When you think of your disadvantages, disadvantages will come to you. When you think about, how can I find the beauty in this situation? How can I find the beauty in this intersectionality and make it my advantage? Success, positivity, that beauty will all come towards you. And that's what you need to focus on. But it doesn't just come overnight. It comes with a price, and that's the price of hard work. Everyone in life has the, well, the choice of two struggles. The struggle of discipline or the struggle of regret. I never want to be old and regret everything that I wasn't able to accomplish. That's why I choose discipline. That's why successful people choose discipline. I know that if I put in hard work, put in effort, put in my time, and disciplined every single day, it doesn't matter what my disadvantage is. Because I can find the beauty in any situation and I can make that my advantage. I can make it my greatest asset and my greatest resource. And that's what I was able to do and continue to do with being legally blind. Your challenge might be different than mine. You might have a different disability. You might be an alcoholic or have an addiction. You might come from a broken home or maybe just lost your job and struggling to pay your bills. But if you can take a step back, focus on the positivity, focus on putting in that time and that effort and that hard work, you can find the beauty in that situation, that disadvantage and that obstacle. You can turn it into your advantage. You can make it the moment moment. You can make it the scenario, the point in your life that changes the rest of your life for your future. Do the things that you should do. Do the things that you need to do. You can accomplish anything you want if you take a look at the situation and find the beauty in it. So many people don't do that, though. So many people take a look at their situation and say, this is my disadvantage because this is what the circumstances are in front of me. I don't let my circumstances define me. I define my circumstances. I find the beauty in the situation, the beauty in the circumstance, the beauty in the problem in front of me. And that's what you can do as well. If you can find the beauty in every single issue, every single challenge, every single obstacle within your life, you can accomplish anything that you want. You can make the impossible possible, I promise you that. You can do anything you want. You can turn your disadvantage into your greatest advantage. I was able to become the first legally blind Division I athlete to play in a game go on to become a team captain, an NFL free agent, and now an entrepreneur and a speaker by finding the beauty in situations, the beauty in intersectionality. If you take one thing away from this today, it's that no matter your disadvantage, no matter your challenge, no matter your obstacle, your issue, your problem in front of you, you can turn it into your advantage by finding the beauty in that situation, the beauty in that intersectionality. You can make the impossible possible, I promise you. Thank you all so much for having me here today. I really appreciate it. I've enjoyed talking to you all about the beauty and intersectionality, and I hope that my speech really benefit you. 
and you took something away from it.